Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. This show is sponsored by Dixon's Chemist, who are the experts in LDN and associated treatments in the UK. Dixon's Chemist are the most cost-effective for LDN in all forms within the UK and Europe, maintaining safety standards far in excess of what is required. Why would you choose to get your LDN from anywhere else? Call 0141 404 6545 today to speak to their LDN experts. Today my guest is Paul Burgess, who's a functional medicine practitioner. Now he doesn't prescribe LDN, but he works with other doctors who do prescribe LDN. Now, Paul is all about finding the root cause. He's from England. Um, And I know that many of you have listened to the functional medicine doctors we have interviewed in the US. So this is really exciting for us. It's a first. Thank you for joining us today, Paul. My pleasure. And it's nice to know that I'm a first for somebody. (laughs) So you are all about finding the root cause what the underlying problems are, not treating the symptoms, but the cause. So when a patient comes to you, how do you go about tracking down what is the root cause? Well, I mean, you're right. We do want to find out what the root cause is. Um, But we've got a challenge with a lot of things before we even get to treat patients. The biggest issue is the majority of people have a preconceived idea as to what what happens with a practitioner uh, client relationship and they think that they go somewhere and they give them a magic pill or the missing supplement you know you 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 need aloe vera juice that's the, your deficiency and once you've got that you'll be fine and and they have that preconceived idea that they're going to go somewhere get given the answer and then go away and they'll be fixed <clears throat> And sadly, that's kind of inherited from our childhood, where we grow up, when we're sick, get taken to a doctor, and they give us a prescription for the one thing that will fix us. And I think that's the way life is. So getting people to understand that actually, when some presents with symptoms, they're generally a sign that there's a collection of underlying issues that are a problem. And it's not about treating the acute problem that's going on. Clearly, that has to be addressed. But the acute problem is being driven by something else. This is perfectly you know, normal common sense. We know this. But too many people focus on the acute problem. They want to bring that uh, under control. And then the patient thinks they're fixed. What they haven't done as a practitioner is looked at what caused that symptom in the first place, or more importantly, what collection of things contributed to those symptoms. So I was having a conversation with somebody this morning in uh, that that had for decades been to practitioners and and got the same sort of treatment, which was um, symptom fixing. And I just couldn't understand why no one had dealt with the root cause. And the root cause in her particular case was her lifestyle and the way she'd set up her career. She had two careers that were running simultaneously. And the way she'd set them up was extraordinarily uh, stressful. Um, Took up a lot of her time, a lot of her attention, and really was causing um, deep health problems because of it. Now... Nobody's coming to her and saying to her, okay, look, you need to look at what's driving this stress and how your body is not resilient enough now to deal with it. So we need to look at how you've structured your businesses. We need to look at 
are there ways in which we can maybe lay off some of the stress to somebody else? Can we look at maybe your main business and the turnover that does and find a way in which we can make that less detrimental to your health? And these aren't things that we're going to do overnight. These are things that we're going to work on over the next six months, 12 months, two years, whatever it is. But unless we do actually make some changes in the areas that no one else is looking at, we do have to have this cycle that almost this hamster wheel of getting sick, getting fixed, getting sick again, getting fixed again, and it's just going to go on like it has done. And so we want to look at everybody individually from that perspective and look at what are the underlying problems that are going on here and they do end up being lots of different things you know it's going to be habits so lifestyle habits that have been unconsciously accumulated over time just you know life drives us in certain ways and media drives us in certain ways and peer groups drive us in certain ways and we end up being a type of person so habits are really important to have a look at we want to look at how our body physically can manage life and the stresses that brings upon us Stress isn't the only thing that causes problems, by the way. Um, and we want to look at what our, you know, our goals and what the way we talk to ourselves and, and what our outlook is on life and how that is affecting us. This is something, um, and we've spoken before and we've had some great conversations. And um, I want to just mention something that people don't really spend enough time thinking about. Um, there's, a, there's a kind of a explanation that I give to a lot of people, and it is that when we're born, we have uh, a bank account that we are born with, and we can't add anything to that account. All we can do is every day we can withdraw 24 hours from it. Now, if that 24 hours does not have some kind of amazing experience in it, if we're not enjoying life to the full, because we're focused on health problems, because we're focused on stress, because we're focused on fatigue or whatever it is, that 24 hours get through and they're coming back. The first problem is we do not know what our balance is. So I don't know if this is the last 24 hours or whether I've got another 3,000 of them. But I do know that if I do not make the most out of this day, it's gone forever. People don't bother thinking about it like that because life gets in the way and all of a sudden they look back after a year five years ten years twenty years and realize that all they focused on were all the things that were going wrong all of the problems that i've got all of the back pain all of the fatigue or i can never sleep or whatever else it is and have had no capacity to look at how to relive a amazing life because that's what we're here for so part of what our uh, treatment is and part of what I try and do for my patients is obviously we want to deal with the acute stuff and get rid of that pain or bring down that bloating or whatever it is that they've got going on. We also look at treating the chronic um, issues that they've accumulated over years and turn those around but eventually we want to get them to understand that every day needs to be taken advantage of and, and live this amazing life and so if we can get control back over the health by changing habits so that long-term we don't have this reoccurrence of the problems, so we get ourselves back on track long-term, we have then have the capacity to start enjoying life. And I know that's a bit of a very, very long answer to a short question you, are, you asked. <laughs> but I think that whole process is really important to try and communicate because there are too, too many people that are just not getting that kind of service and that kind of um, input and they're just looking at the short-term stuff and that's where the whole thing falls down I think. Mm -hmm. So let's just say you have an autoimmune patient come to see you. Let's use me for an example. I've got multiple sclerosis. I do have hereditary high cholesterol and I do take a statin which I was told by the consultant even if I lived on a lettuce leaf and a glass of water. Um, it's not going to change us that. It's no, not it's, not going to, it's not going to change it. And I'm also a diabetic, um, but with diet changes, I'm actually in the class of pre-diabetic. Apparently, you never lose the label, so I'm pre-diabetic. So if I came to you 
They're just waiting for it to happen is basically what they're saying. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> always useful. Well, I'm hoping that I can keep it at bay. So I, I'm, sure. I'm careful. Put it that way. So where, where would you start if I came to see you? Just to give our listeners an idea of, you know, how you plan on resolving okay, well, issues. So the first thing um, that I do with everybody is we want to have a, a proper half an hour discussion about, you know, what your scenario is, what your history has been, and get a very good understanding as to what's going on. Uh, you give me the short version of that, and for this, you know, for these purposes, we will use it. And um, I would want to also get a very comprehensive blood test done because I want to know really what's going on today. And, and I understand the chronic stuff that you've discussed. Um, and I, I know the autoimmune, you've mentioned everything else. <clears throat> but I want to see exactly what is going on from all your body systems. So how's your liver? How's your kidneys? How's your heart health? How's your cholesterol, as you mentioned, and your blood glucose? And how's your immune system and everything? So I to get a very comprehensive picture. It gives us far more understanding as to what's going on right now. Mm. That then allows me to look at what the really important things are. So if there are things that are causing you daily problems, food, MS is one of them, <coughs> excuse me, but if there, are, if let's say somebody comes and they've got things that, you know, they're always fatigued, they can't sleep or whatever it is, we want to look at what really is driving those things and start addressing them as the quick fixes However, in your particular case, after what you just said to me about statins and cholesterol and things, I probably want to get a DNA test done for you. Um, if you've got your if you've got your raw data, I want to have a, a bit of a um, look at it because there are certain SNPs in people that where things like cholesterol are involved, I have seen before where. People say, look, these are the, this is the sort of diet you should follow. And as your consultant said, you know, you can drink water and eat lettuce. You're not going to change that. But sometimes there are clues in our DNA that allow us to use certain nutri nutrition protocols that actually do help it. So I want to find out a bit more about that and have a look at what kind of setup you've got from a DNA perspective. It may also give us some clues when it comes to autoimmune. Um, but that's a massive conversation that we're obviously not going to get into uh, uh, today. But mm -hmm. so I want to do that. Um, uh, uh, diabetes was the one, wasn't it? So um, <clears throat> the DNA will also tell us how your body is set up to process and um, deal with carbohydrate and, and blood glucose in general. Now, one of the things about diabetes is that people are told to. Initially, they're told, eat your carbohydrate, just have complex carbs, and this, that, and the other. Then, in, and especially if they're being given metformin, it's like, okay, we'll keep doing what you're doing, but just take this, and it will, it will help. Then, if you get into a functional medicine arena, you're told, no, 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 carbs are not what you want to do. You want to improve, increase your fat, bring down your carbs significantly, use a higher protein approach, because that way you give yourself some... Um, time to improve their insulin sensitivity and by the way here's some berberine or whatever it is to try and help with that the problem with that is again there are certain genetic SNPs that work really badly with high fat diets so we've got a diabetic case where they're being told potentially you know reduce your carbs and increase your fats but some of us and I'm one of them I'm an APOE4 and um, I don't do well with high saturated fat I also don't do well with carbohydrate so I need in my particular case I need to be able to work out you know what level of fat and the types of fat are good for me and also what level of carbohydrate and the types of carbohydrate so we're getting very specific um, but for, for someone in your particular case where we've got this long standing autoimmune and so on it's probably quite important we get into those specifics and um, Autoimmune paleo tends to work very well for a lot of people um, from, as a dietary um, adjunct because it takes out the majority of the irritating foods that we know cause problems for people's immune system, so wheat, gluten, dairy, legumes, grains, nightshades, and eggs. Um, but it can be quite restrictive. And 
it's great as a therapeutic and often in short um, bursts, but a lot of people find that very difficult to live on, as it were. Mm-hmm. So we'd want to find something that's that's kind of a hybrid of everything. Again, looking through your genetics and just finding what's going to be useful for you that you can stick to. Um, so once I've done all of that, then I'd want to sit down and say, okay, we're working, we're doing 12 months of work here. The initial thing I want to implement is X, Y, Z. So whatever I think is going to be the most important thing to start with. But it'd be a very small change or a very small new habit because I want you to be able to do it and I want you to be able to keep it um, doing, if you see what I mean. I want, to, you know, I want to keep you able to comply with that. Mm-hmm. And then in a week's time, I just want to get an update from you, what's going on, how are you feeling, how are you finding it? And in two weeks' time, we get back on another call. Um, mine are all video calls, and I have patients all around the world. So every two weeks, we get on a call for about an hour, discuss what happened in those last two weeks and how we want to then structure the next two weeks. Now, from a patient perspective, so from your perspective, it's not necessary for you to know everything that we're going to do in the 12 months. That becomes overwhelm, and it, will, it almost becomes a little bit counterproductive because you're like, oh, how am I going to do all that? Mm-hmm. So what I want to open up to you is this is what we need to do for this week or this next two weeks. It's well within your capacity. It's something that you can do um, and not have to think too much about, but we can add it. You know, We've got that next layer that we're putting in. Now, if we do that every week, every two weeks for the next 12 months, you won't recognise yourself after 12 months because all of your habits will have changed, your approach to food and anything else that's been important will have changed. But it's been done in such a subtle and incremental way that you are able to continue it. So that's kind of the bare bones of it. The specifics of how we do uh, treat someone with autoimmune and so on is very much you know, down to that individual. And in your particular case, I'd want to see some DNA work just to just to see if we're if we've got anything in there that allows us a little bit of advantage when putting things together for you and mm-hmm. um, so i'm not sure that's answered your question that well but, um it kind of is where i'd want to go with that okay so we all know that blood tests are expensive and yes um, are you able to get any done on the nhs or are they all private I mean, you can get bloods done on the NHS, um, but they're not really valuable because they don't really give us the information that we need. Mm-hmm. Um, they give us a very um, restricted amount of markers. Um, and it's like anything, the markers that tell us the good stuff, you know, the, the ones that are really important to us, they're just expensive to process and the, and the labs charge a lot of money for them. So you can do NHS testing, but it's not really going to give us the information we need so um, they are expensive um, a pretty comprehensive one that covers pretty much everything that we want to see it covers about 90 plus markers the report is about 100 pages long it's not one of these things you get just with a list of markers that it says H or L next to it high or low none of that it's a proper comprehensive report um, uh, runs at about £550 and that's cheap, believe it or not. You know that that particular test that we use, if you were to go into a lab and ask for it to be done, will, would cost around eighteen or nineteen hundred pounds. Mm. So, and that's without the report and without my time going through it and discussing the findings and you know highlighting what, what the report shows. Mm-hmm. So, at five fifty, actually, it's probably a very very um, uh, economical way of getting some very very deep understanding of what's going on and i have i do have patients that will do that every six months or every year just to keep an eye on things because nothing massive has come up and nothing you know needs needs addressing per se but they like to know that what they're doing is working and and they they just keep that as a kind of a you know a way of tracking themselves Mm -hmm. and does Um, does that um initial blood test include the dna testing as well it, it, that's just for the, the blood test. So what's so, the... Isn't the D- DNA a blood test or is it a different test? The blood test would be the blood. The DNA would be um, a saliva swab. Ah, OK. And then that would go to um, a separate entity. Uh, if, if, very often people have had DNA done nowadays 
Um, but they have it done in, with people like 23andMe or um, some of the other um, DNA Fit and this kind of crowd. But give them uh, an amount of information based on what they're trying to do. But when they assess the, the DNA, they have their raw data. Now, they don't use, so these particular companies don't use all the raw data because they don't have a need for it uh, or they don't have an understanding of it. Do not get me wrong, I am not a DNA wizard and can tell you every step of every variation. But what I do know is some of the things they miss, because it's just not on their radar, we can often pick up on and say, okay, well, actually, now we've got that information, we know we need to do this for you, and this will help us. And so if people have their existing DNA, we can get the raw data from it and then run it through a, a, a different report which gives us information that we're after. Mm -hmm. um, if they don't have it, then they can get one done. Um, I think they're about £150. Um, and obviously you only ever need to do it once. Your DNA doesn't change. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be very useful. I wouldn't get it done for everybody. I'd get it done for you because I think there's some value there. Um, but um, it's, not, it's not a prerequisite, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, mm -hmm. it's like anything. Uh, everyone's individual and we want to treat them all best we can. I um, had SIBO. I didn't realise I'd got it. I was used to living with a stomach Blinding. that felt as though it had been yeah. kicked. You know, I always had yeah. stomach ache. Anyway, um, Dr Leonard Weinstock, who's one of our medical advisors, he's a, a gastroenterologist, was asking me questions and he said, you need to go to your doctors and ask for a, a breath test. Long story short, I couldn't get one. I just, I couldn't there get one. Um, yeah. So my question is, do you organise breath tests for people? Yep. You do? Yep. Okay. It, 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 a lot of GPs won't even recognise SIBO as an issue. Same as they don't recognise Lyme. Don't yeah. say, no, it doesn't exist. It's not to do with us. We, we, there's no, there's no, there's no uh, research behind it, which, you know, it just baffles me. But So a lot of them won't do them. Um and even if they do, they don't really know how to treat them. Um, so we can do a breath test for SIBO if, if symptoms are there. Mm -hmm. um, I think mm, 160 pounds, I want to say, but they're kind of around that sort of money. Okay. And what it will do is it will give us an idea as to is it is it methane um, dominant? Is it hydrogen dominant? Is there, there's also a slightly different one called um, hydrogen sulfide, which can come up sometimes, which isn't technically a, a, a SIBO, it's just something else that happens in the gut that can be quite uncomfortable. Mm. Um, and, and then based on what comes back, we're able to get very good recommendations as to how to treat it. The problem with SIBO isn't treating the problem, it's treating the cause of it. Because if you keep doing the same thing from a dietary perspective that caused it in the first place, you can, you know, for want of a better way of saying it, you can take the antibiotics for it and kill the bacteria, but you're only going to get back again if you don't change your habits. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it can be very uncomfortable for a lot of people, and, and people go through you know, many years of it, and, and, and no one gets to the bottom of it. So, I had, sure I had six months on the FODMAP diet. I mean, yeah. you were talking about elimination diets and how hard it is to stick with. Mm. Well, this FODMAP diet, you can hardly eat anything. <laughs> It, it is yeah. extremely restrictive, um, and I was so pleased to be able to eat again after that. And I, mm -hmm. I didn't really think the nutritional value was that good, but it was only, you know, six months is not too bad out of a lifetime. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but it can it's come back. Interesting. In, in that particular case, um, and if it's you and knowing your history and everything else, you know, there is an argument to, to for me to go to some of our. Um, LDM prescribers, and, and the future, well, I think we might have a good reason to use an, a course of antibiotics here. Um, we can get on top of this really quickly. It sounds like it's been well established for a long time. Um, instead of using the uh, naturopathic route, mm. which is doable as well, um, just to get a, a, bit, a bit of a quick win on this one, um, we could potentially go down the antibiotics, get that done, work on changing what's caused it in the first place, we're going to have to do a lot of gut work anyway, so we'll be able to repopulate that gut, um, work on the gut lining, the mucosal lining, 
make sure that the um, stomach acid is at the appropriate levels and things like that. So the, the, using the, the antibiotics in certain circumstances can be an option. I'm not mm. saying it's the one we're going to you know, yeah. insist on, but we do want to know what all the options are. And there are times where medications can be useful. Um, so I wouldn't close off anything. It all depends on the person and the history and, and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, we've cut. Yeah, or the alternative is six months of FODMAPs and, and hopefully. <laughs> well, I did have. Nutraceuticals work. I did have antibiotics as well because the test results showed that it was chronic and the only yeah. option was the yeah. antibiotics. And I think it was like two weeks antibiotics. Yeah, so I think yeah, I had so about, two of uh, them as well. Two. 14 days, two, two, two different ones. For yes. Days. That's right. Kind of deals with it pretty well, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're at the end, but I'm sure that the. People listening would like to discuss their cases with you. Would you like to tell us how they can get hold of you? What is your website address? Yeah, well, the easiest way is to go to the website, which is Paul Burgess, B U R G E S dot UK. So Paul Burgess dot UK. Um, there is a uh, there's some information there about what I do and how it's done and so on. And to be honest, I think you've pretty much showed it all in the last 20 minutes. Um, there's a button on all the pages where you can click and get a free 30 minute uh, consult. Talk about anything you like. I really, you know, there's no real specialist area that I'm going to say that we want to focus on. I'm happy to talk to everybody about whatever's going on. Um, and then from there, we can discuss. You know how we can potentially help people. It's um, like we've got patients all around the world, so um, very happy for anyone from anywhere, including the US, as you mentioned earlier, um, to come and, and, and chat to us. And if we can help, then I'd be more than happy to. And do you have a waiting list? That will be one of the first questions people will want to know. All depends, um, and I know that sounds a bit vague, but we do have a waiting list for certain things that we need to. Uh, treat people for um, only because we're not able to get into the clinics that we want for them to get treatment Um, but in general the first step is just to do the 30 minute free call Um, and then I mean there are quite a few and far between the people for the waiting list if I feel as though um, we do need to get other specialists involved then obviously that would be discussed and we can talk about how long will it take to, to get things done but what I wouldn't do um, and I think this is quite important for people to realise is I've been in business for quite a long time um, and I've been uh, I wasn't going to say fortunate but I was so fortunate I've been successful at it and I don't need the business so I'm not scrabbling around trying to find the next patient and I'm not interested in taking people on in a rush you know I want to take the right people and put them through the right processes so that we can get long-standing results with them. And so, you know, if I feel as though we we can do good work in four months because there's a specialist I'm waiting to work on our case, on, on your case with you, then I'll say that. You know, I've got no, no harm in doing that whatsoever. Because the goal is to get the patient better. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's not to alleviate that acute thing that you've got at the moment or anything else it's how do we put the process in that we improve your life improve your health in the long term and if it means we need to wait a little bit longer for certain things so be it so yeah you know we're very flexible but i want to make sure we get the best for for the patients for their particular scenario well that's been amazing paul and of course ldn isn't the magic bullet either you know you have to work at it you know you have to have exercise you have to have good sleep you have to have good diet it all of these things go hand in hand you know and inflammation is a big thing um 100 and and so linda here's the thing all of those things you just mentioned are habits that need to be just adjusted and you're right there's no you can't take a magic bullet because there isn't one Um, but while ldn can be hugely beneficial and really really bring about uh and the benefits where people have just not found them anywhere else. You can't just rely on that. You still need to do that habitual work. You still need to do that slight adjustment in lifestyle, slight adjustment in 
your perception on life, you know, start enjoying. Yeah, finally, let's just say this. When people enjoy life every day, they tend to be healthier. So there's a lot to be said for that. And if we can get people into that frame of mind and actually enjoying life more and having that, that wonderful quality of life, a lot of the health stuff starts to improve. And that's kind of where we want to get people. And LDN has a good part in it for the right people, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for having joined us today, Paul. I thoroughly enjoyed it. My pleasure. This show is sponsored by Dixon's Chemist who are the experts in LDN and associated treatments in the UK. Dixon's chemists are the most cost-effective for LDN in all forms within the UK and Europe, maintaining safety standards far in excess of what is required. Why would you choose to get your LDN from anywhere else? Call 0141 404 6545 today to speak to their LDN experts. Any questions or comments you may have, please email me, linda, L-I-N-D-A, at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.